is to talk about what's topical. I must say, there's buggered all in the papers this week. I was sat upstairs before with me slender tone belts on. I've seen them. You wrap it round your belly. Yeah, somebody over there's got one, have you? <laughs> and you switch it on and you sort of get these electric shocks. So you sat there and you go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. And it's working. Man, I don't need it. Only put it on, you know, just like, because I like being electrocuted, basically. <laughs> It's lost at the moment and I can't take it back because I can't find the receipt, which is not unusual because I nicked it in the first place. <laughs> well, my nails come off and I need more seaweed in my diet. What else has happened this week? Oh, Sean Connery was voted the sexiest voice ever. Did you read that in the papers? Did you see what I got? I came 1,824th, just below Joe Pascali and Zippy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick on the coach going home. <laughs> Do you know, I was in Glasgow once and I got a review in the paper that said, if Donald Duck had been born in Baconhead, smoked 60 caps to full strength a day, drank a bottle of whiskey and swift helium, this is what he'd sound like. Begin living, I tell you. <laughs> what else is that? Oh, Giorgio Armani's kicked off, you know, the designer. He says, um, Versace and he makes outfits for sluts. Let me tell you, I've got about 60 Versace outfits in my wardrobe and I'm no scrubber, that's for sure. That's Versace I'm back, look. Although I didn't know Versace was spelled V-E-R-S-A-C-H-E. <laughs> you bike, do you? Imagine those, um, do you like Armani for women? I always think they look like those Brookside lesbians. You know what they do? Because they have these box jackets and skirts. Why is it lesbians on telly always wear suits like that? Lots of lip gloss and the hair hanging down the back. <laughs> The nipple clamp and the punch up and the black cap. I mean, I... <laughs> it's not right. Lesbians aren't like that. I'll tell you what, I could give men up and become a lesbian. I know it's an acquired taste, but I'm sure I'd get used to it. <laughs> Quite easy, become a lesbian. I'm sick of men, me. I am. You know that thing I was married to briefly. He's selling his story to the sun. They all shit on you in the end, don't they, fellas? <laughs> really, I don't believe in divorce, just murder the bastards. <laughs> Do you know? Ooh. He used to call me sweetheart all the time. Oh, sweetheart. Do you know why? Because you couldn't remember my friggin' name, that's why. <laughs> I know when I met him and uh, we were getting engaged, we were looking in Pikes, the jewellers in Liverpool in the window, and I said, that's a lovely ring there. He said, I'll get you that when the shop shuts. <laughs> Do you know, I'd cry if it wasn't for the Prozac, honest to God. <laughs> and then we went past TJ Hughes, and a lovely coat in the window, camel coat, three quarters of length with the Persian Al collar, and I said, that's nice. He said, I'll get you that in the shop shops. <laughs> then we went past Blacklist, that's a lovely tea service. I said, will you get us that in the shop shops? He said, what do you think I am, made of bricks? Oh, God. <laughs> so finally I snapped. I remember the day, well, it was my birthday. I said to him, I want a divorce. And he said, well, I hadn't intended to spend that much money, you know. So. <laughs> They go, Matt Daff men, don't they, when they're, like, middle-aged, don't you think? They go a bit soft, they start dressing young. That daft bastard's had his belly button pierced. <laughs> you know why, right, so he can lift it up while he's having a pee. Oh, it's sad, see? <laughs> Honest to God. At least sick. I mean, at least women, when we're at middle age, we're not soft, are we? Oh, no, we slap a patch on, drink cheap sherry and watch QVC all day. I mean... <laughs> anyway, let's move on, shall we, please? Don't forget first, now, if you're sat at home alone, make new friends on the telephone. Um, remember that advert? I used to think it's time to go to bed when that came on. <laughs> so, just remember, if you are sat at home... That's it, lift the camera up. You don't want to look at shoulders, thank you very much. The eek, they want to see the glamour. If, um, He's moving that camera down. You move that once while I rip your balls off and shove them down your throat. <laughs> I think I'm due to come on because I'm in the right mood. I tell you. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, what's up with you lot? It's a biological function. We all do it. <laughs> I've got about 30 years to go yet before my men pause. I tell you. Anyway. <laughs> do 
Shut, I'll tell you, I'll be up there and I'll rip your head off and shit in your neck and I don't care who it is. I'm not bothered. I'm not having it, Quentin. They promised me a decorating program. Oh, aye. You know what one of them cattle does? You go around somebody's house, sit there smoking while somebody slaps a bit of wallpaper up. <laughs> Matters too much of that, I think, on the telly, don't you? Yeah. Hey, love is finished. Thank God. <laughs> oh, it's insane. Anyway, shut up, because I've got to do an announce, public announcement now to the punters at home. Is anybody watching? I mean, I'm like prisoner of the cell block H, mate. <laughs> Put me on at any bloody time and don't advertise it. Serious. <laughs> if there's tiddlywinks on, they'd move me for this, honestly, God. <laughs> bloody Olympics, I'm sick to death of that. Who are these coxless ones? <laughs> I've seen this. No. I was lying in bed. I wasn't kipping, I was just collapsed, you know? <laughs> and then, fuck, strong dope. I just collapsed on the. <laughs> and I had the wireless on. Ooh, that shows your age, doesn't it? Wireless. <laughs> It's like saying boutique and scent. That's very aging as well. <laughs> Had the radio on, the CD, you know, the, um, the MD, whatever they're called, mini player discs. Yes. <laughs> I've got that. Oh, my, I've got the works and all now. It's like the Odeon. And uh, I had the wireless on. I forgot what I was saying now. Doesn't your mind wonder when you've drunk a bottle of night, nurse? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't think you can do this with that medication, do you? Please. That's me wheeled in like Marlene. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and then. Uh, Shut up! You get me nerves clapping every five bloody minutes. <laughs> Think I have a special act with a sea lion. Anyway. <laughs> and I heard this fella on the wireless, on the radio, on the mini display, say, um, he said, oh, the coxless ones have won a gold. And I, I, so I saw them in the paper. <laughs> Strapping thing, they've got no dick. Isn't it a waste? Is it honest <laughs> to That's sorry, my life, that. Get a fella. Get him home, hung like a bloody hamster. Honest to God. <laughs> Not that I'm into sizes. It's two things I can't bear, small dicks and size queens. Anyway, right. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, if you're sat at home, depressed, as you probably are on a Saturday night, not going anywhere, no friends, no invites, you haven't won the lottery, you're potless, your hair's hanging in damp, straggling. <laughs> the kids are upstairs screaming, there's a pail full of shitty nappies. He's out drinking, you don't know where he is. The dog's chewed your best shoes that you haven't paid for yet off the catalogue. In fact, you are suicidal. Do it, Adam. Don't do it. Don't do it. You can ring me, and we have a panel from the audience of very sensible people, <laughs> and we will help you. So, remember, the number to call is... Don't be padding your pass. I tell you, you're here to sing and that's it. Bugger all else. Thank you very much. What's the number? 0870904000. So ring it. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. You're how looking are you? good at the tan. Thank you oh, very make much. Me sick. I'm the colour of boiled shite. Look, it's not. <laughs> Martin, please go away. You make me look ancient. It's Martin McCutcheon, please. See you later. See you later. Tell me, she was coming on. I thought we were getting that muscle man again. No, did he have a breakdown after last week? <laughs> Some people can't take it, can they? Some of us can. <laughs> I said to him, look at me as a Fisher Price play and learn centre. I said, twiddle all the knobs and dials you like. <laughs> you twiddle all the knobs, you know, the pictures don't get any better. <laughs> right, so let's move on, shall we, folks? Because it's time for our TV. I can't see this bloody auto cue with this contact lens. Well, have a look. See, what's happened at home? I put two lenses in. Can you see? I've still got a mad red eye. <laughs> got this kid screaming now. <laughs> I'm gonna get ya. <laughs> oh, God, I love fighting kids. <laughs> I used to work in the grotto, you know, in Hamleys. He said, this way, children. It was an empty lift shaft. Stand, you got... <laughs> Two of my own. I don't believe in cruelty to children. Mental cruelty is far more effective. <laughs> so there's something under the bed as you shut the door. There you go. Um, <laughs> so let's move on, shall we? Because it's time for our TV and film review with a young lady who was once described in the Daily Star as a rambling rose. Equally as home in a bed, up against a wall, on on a patio. <laughs> Would you please welcome the two and only Miss Gail Tuesday, Britain's answer to Pamela. 